Good evening, fellow Kung Fu movie, comic book, social media, and digital media fans. I am thrilled and honored to have as a return guest on the Film Fan Dojo podcast, Sifu Jan Lucanus. Sifu Jan, it's been a, well, it's been at least six months since we had you on, probably a little bit more. I'm losing track of time. So uh, first of all, how are you feeling? I'm feeling, you know, pretty, pretty spectacular and, and just really, really grateful for your, your time and love and, and uh, support, <laughs> you know? Right. Well, we gotta, we gotta do what we can for our fellow Marshall brothers and uh, comic book lovers and et cetera, et cetera. We could go on and on. Um, so I've noticed on your social media channels, uh, Instagram, on YouTube, your Tai Chi channel on YouTube, you've you've really been ramping up the content as of late. And I want to know what's um, what's some of the latest that's going on. You know, we want to talk about Justice for Hire, but what's some of the latest going on outside of Justice for Hire, or is it all linked? Because I've really been noticing the Tai Chi channel has really been been um, booming with content, and you just got to a thousand subscribers, maybe about four or five months ago. So let's say, can we talk about that? Sure. So um, the Tai Chi, all, all of it is linked, um, but I do my best to keep the audiences, uh, to, to clarify the value for each audience as we move toward, they're all on parallel timelines going to like one destination. But um, the, on the Tai Chi side, I think around last year, I've had hundreds of videos unreleased on my Tai Chi YouTube that is just, just waiting. And uh, you know, I fantasize about having a day or two days to just, you know, write every description that needs to be written, schedule each one, and um, and put it out there. Um, that said, it is when when Shang Chi came out, <clears throat> I I had to do a a Shang Chi video, a, a top five breakdown of of like the the Tai Chi moves in Shang Chi because there's Tai Chi's all over that movie, and. I was like, I just got to do this. And, you know, it took me a few days. We, we, we shot it. I cut it. it. took me about three days to cut three videos that were all linked. It's There's a top five video. And then there's a, a breakdown of the Dalu, uh, two-person moving push hands kind of exercise that they do. And then there's a compliment complimentary video to that Dalu video. And uh, the response was was pretty spectacular. And um <clears throat> And that was, I'd have to say that was actually a follow-up to my no BS Tai Chi video. <laughs> so the no BS Tai Chi video was, was in June of last year, 2021. Uh, it was my first big seminar um, a, a, as a coach where it was really just me, focused on me being the, I've done like so many events, I've done all this other stuff, but I've never done one that's just fully branded for, for real martial artists who may not care that you do Tai Chi and they may not care about those principles. And I think that that's so important because Tai Chi, uh, you know, means supreme ultimate. And I think one of the challenges when people train chai, Tai Chi is that there's an ego that comes with it, thinking that, oh, because I train this thing that is the supreme ultimate, I'm better than all these other people. And it's not really that. And I, I understand that Tai Chi is taking an approach I look at it as a as a as a, uh, a particular approach that can be done with anything. Like Tai Chi can be anything. Um, if you want to really look at it as a martial artist, you have to actually train martial arts. So if you only do Tai Chi and you only talk to Tai Chi people and you think you're a martial artist, you're probably going to get your ass kicked, and you probably can't withstand real pressure from from real people. But if you go out there and you train with real people who don't care that you do Tai Chi. Who are who are non are, are like they're non agreeable players. If you do that, then you're really testing these principles because at the end of the day, Tai Chi is actually the end result, in my experience of any mastery, like any path of mastery, especially the martial arts. Like every martial artist, after en enough time, is going to start slowing themselves down to speed up their perception. They're going to receive more information in a moment than people who have been training less time. 
and who are training less op in a less optimized fashion. So, um, <clears throat> so Tai Chi to me is a really big deal, obviously. And I've been ramping up content because what I just said, people aren't saying. And, <laughs> you know, and, and I know so many folks that, and, and people really started responding to it. They, they saw the no BS Tai Chi, they saw the Shang Chi stuff. And, and, I, and I started getting a really great response. And I noticed that my, my videos were upticking in a way that, you know, I have my coach, Josh Waitskin on there. And, um, and uh, like his videos on my channel and most of my traffic originally was coming from his videos. And, um, you know, because he achieved such a high level as both a uh, Tai Chi player and as a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu guy, and also because he's Josh Waitzkin, the, the chess prodigy. So um, to see my videos starting to get um, their own, claim their own space on my channel, I, I just kind of shifted my thinking on the channel. It used to be called World Push Hands. Mm -hmm. That's still youtube.com slash World Push Hands uh, because the intention was to honor all, all styles of Tai Chi, all styles of push hands. I and mean, that still is the intention, but I started to make it more personal. And I said, okay, well, you know what? This is Coach Jan's <laughs> Tai Chi push hands channel. And, you know, I, I'm going to talk the way I was, uh, I was coached. And I'm going to share the things that I've discovered. And my intention is to be, I'm actually about to launch a Patreon on there um, and to have like exclusive access for people who want a coach because there aren't Tai Chi coaches for the most part. And having a Tai Chi coach helped me understand my teacher, my, tai, my Sifu better, and helped me understand my other teachers in other areas and actually draw the lines, create true lateral thinking between different arenas. And so that the clarity of Tai Chi as a, as a system for uh, breathwork visualization and uh, optimized body mechanics and the container which has been put, which is essentially one of the most disrespected containers in the martial arts. People are like, oh, Tai Chi guys, they suck. Uh, they can, you know, that's all BS. Oh, they're cheap powers and all sorts of stuff. Like we don't do any of that. I was not coached in any of that stuff. And <clears throat> as a matter of fact, I was actually specific by Grandmaster William C.C. Chen, who's my teacher as well now, but was originally my coach, Josh's teacher. He was like, hey, yeah, all that stuff you see was made for theater. It was literally made like when you see someone, you know, get pushed and they skip backwards and do all the other stuff. He's like, we made that up and we made that up to be symbolic. It was, it was supposed to be the, the symbolism of the tai, the trained Tai Chi player versus the untrained uh, uh, practitioner and how powerful Tai Chi truly can be. And so understanding that and then seeing how Westerners, especially how, how they were sold an idea and then how they perpetuate these ideas that are essentially myth and, um, you know, theatrics, it, it's, it's like, it's time for somebody who's just real, who just comes in and says, Hey, look, here's how you can get better. Here's how to, how to understand what your teacher's saying. Cause your teacher's saying this, but you may want to ask this question. And if your teacher's saying that, then, okay, well, let's apply that because if it's not if you can't do it on call, if it's not repeatable, it's not competition worthy. And so if you can't do it at any given time, then if you can't utilize it against any particular pressure, then it may not be something that you wanna carry with you. And you know, people comment on my, my channel all the time. I, I'm, I'm taking a long time with this. I'm so passionate about this. I'm taking a long time with my response here. Take it down. Because um, you know, even a couple of days ago, someone, uh, I, I was talking about pressure circuits mm -hmm. and you know, these pressure circuits oftentimes can be called rooting, but rooting is different. The pressure circuits are a subsystem of rooting. Rooting is a subsystem of neutralization. And someone was like saying to me, oh, Jan, that's what you're talking about is nothing new. And I'm like, well, hold on. Like, if you call it neutralization, you're not being specific enough. And it's the specificity, that's where the magic, quote unquote, happens. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, okay, well, he can do this power. And it was just, it just felt like magic. Well, then you didn't ask freaking good questions. If it feels like magic, you have not asked the right questions mm -hmm. because it's not magic. <laughs> like there's no right. magic in, the, in that sense. Like the, the magic is really understanding what you're dealing with. <clears throat> and if you believe it's magic, it's, it's probably because you, 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 you haven't expanded your awareness or deepened your awareness enough to, to actually articulate it in, with words into a way that is, is, is repeatable. And again, therefore competition worthy. Mm -hmm. So um, it, it's, 
I've ramped up content, uh, both new content. I'm, you know, I'm even shooting weight, weight training for Tai Chi. Saw that one. Yeah, I saw um, that one. Shot another one this morning. And so, you know, we're just ramping all of it up because people want this. And again, there's, there, there isn't a, um, I, I, when I had a coach, two coaches, Tai and Tai Chi, Dan, Josh Waitzkin and Dan Caulfield, the assistant coach, that was huge. When my father and I, be, you know, became the coaches of the team, like we're the co-coaches, it was huge for all the other players. Like they grew exponentially to the point where they would come, you know, visit us in New York and beat me up and my father up in front of my class. And that's okay. It's okay for me to lose in front of people because that's what it's all about. Your, stu- your, 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 your teammates, your students should get to a level where they can challenge you. And if they can't do that, then you're not you're transmitting, you're not doing the knowledge transfer properly. So like Patreon coming, real coaching. <laughs> <laughs> good. That's good. Now I want to, I want to stay with this topic for a second. Do you think that you, you're speaking about pressure testing and um, making it real uh, in the training and of course in the application, do you think, do you think the traditional arts and I'm, I'm going to lump Tai Chi in with tra- traditional arts do you think that many traditional arts have had to do that because of the popularity of BJJ and MMA? It's like, we can no longer sit on the sidelines and say, like you were saying about the magical, oh, I'm gonna touch a guy and he's gonna fly 12 feet. And you've had some uh, some videos with MMA and uh, BJJ guys going to different schools or schools coming to visit them and pressure testing, it's not a challenge thing, but more like they're pressure testing. Do you feel that, not necessarily you, but just in general, that because of that, many more, pe- many more people will adopt the approach of what you're talking about to their particular art form? That's an interesting question. I, I, <clears throat> I think MMA is a sport and uh, I, I, I look forward to competing in that sport, actually. Um, I, I've, uh, you know, I used to fight Sancho and I'm like, man, I really want to fight MMA. Um, but it's still a sport. And so when I, when I, when I talk about like making it real, I, I want to be clear that I don't truly believe that you can train for real violence. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> like I think real violence, when I talk to guys who work in correctional facilities oh, that's real violence. yeah and what they go through every day um you know there's even there's a book meditations on violence written by a guy <laughs> who like you know mm-hmm. <laughs> worked in a correctional facility <laughs> yeah. you know and um you know I, I i think that that's a that's a totally different mindset and i have buddies who are are fighters who go and get into street fights on a regular basis who mm-hmm. are bouncers who have to street fights are part of their work uh, or doing their best to to you know uh, break something up and get it outside you know as fast as possible. Like like there, are, I understand that training, and obviously this training works well for that. But like like you know true life death situation, like you that that's that, now we're talking about samurai lifestyle. Like you know mm-hmm. you like so um, and you have with your beautiful background over there. So <laughs> um, and not to say that that. that that we're not that we're so different from similar lifestyle either, uh, because I do think that the meditative practice is 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 you know translates. Um, but I, I'm just doing my best to say that 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 you know when I say real, I don't mean like you train. With oh yeah, no, do anything, no. <laughs> fight anybody. No, um, no, no. I don't, think that, I don't think that exists for anyone. Yeah, like, I, that's I, just you know. I, I I so when I look at it from to answer your question, I believe the entire world's going to do tai chi. Mm-hmm. I believe uh, everybody, and that's because I, be- I like I believe some really like right now we're at an interesting point in time. Like I think the next big thing in, cul- in culture, in pop culture, is God. Mm-hmm. The next big thing in pop culture, mark, mark my words, is God, and <clears throat> and that's understanding people's uh, uh, caution with the word. People saying mm-hmm. the universe rather than saying God, mm-hmm. and. And I think the universe is really important steps. All these small little change shifts in our language are actually indicative of, of shifts in culture and people attempting to expand their awareness in a way that is, is uh, uh, sensitive. 
and 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 I so I appreciate all of that. But the next big thing is God. The next and 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 part of that is going to be people doing Tai Chi because at the end of the day, the the information hierarchy that I am suggesting that I'm I'm sharing through my work in Tai Chi, but uh, applies in in like all the top thinkers that I know actually do it the same way. The whole thing is that there isn't necessarily a system that has a, a uh, kinesthetic counterpart, such as Tai Chi, mm -hmm. that allows you to take a concept and turn it into a drill, a physical breath work and visualization drill that allows you to train that one idea over and over again from different angles. And Tai Chi allows you to do that. I used to get hired to, um, to do, uh, I was the, the head tai, tai Chi instructor at the Assemblage, which was a um, in New York. Uh, it, it closed down now, but uh, during the pandemic. But it was a uh, very forward-thinking collective of entrepreneurs, multiple buildings, um, and uh, a bunch of different. It's such a co-working space meets a consciousness community, and uh, they would hire me for these uh, Gene Keys events. And these Gene Keys events. Uh, Richard Rudd, who I maybe met once, but if I don't know, uh, maybe I met him. <laughs> I think I did. Uh, but he wrote that he's, he's like big in that community. And, and uh, uh, these Gene Keys were the I Ching adapted to like modern, some sort of modern adaptation of the, uh, the I Ching. And I'm like, okay, cool. Well, anything you teach in there, I can turn into an exercise. Mm. And I'm like, because what you're saying is push hands. And so I'm just going to show you the, the breath work drill, the, the Ne Gong. I'm going to show you the power building exercise first. And then I'm going to show you the, the um, uh, push hands exercise that uh, directly relates to the thing that you're trying to solve in your heart. And I would also get hired by the class, Tara Tooney's the class, which is like a... a <laughs> God. Can, when I, if I say this, when I get canceled, <laughs> you know, it's like... Yeah. Cancel moment. Like her, 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 her collective is very much for like attractive people working out. That's all I'll say. Okay. It's I get you. No, you won't get canceled for that. Meditative, That's... meditative collective. Okay. And so, <laughs> you know, but they have like these amazing teachers and, but I would get hired to like specifically to talk, to work with their teachers on certain personality traits. Mm. And I would use push hands and I would come up with exercises that would work toward those personality traits. Because what I do as a coach <clears throat> and what Josh helped me undercover by coaching me is recognizing the talents in a person. Now, like the, the, well, and that's not just like, that's something I naturally do because that's one of the main things I do in media or anything is recognize somebody's talents. And so I'm like, okay, cool. This person does this thing. You like to run away? Great. Let me show you how to turn that into how, how to win points. Okay. Cool. You, you're aggressive. Great. Let me show you how to turn that into how to win points. Like, oh, okay. You, you like to, to redirect and stand your ground. Great. You know, so like, and just keep on doing that. And, and, but all of that, I can see someone's personality. The second I, I, I like watch their movements, it all comes mm -hmm. out. You can't hide. So, um, you know, I, I, I think that, that we're in a wonderful point in time where people you know, one of the things that's starting right now is the, uh, I'm the head judge of the World Series of Push Hands. Hmm. And that's going to be on March 26th in, in Laguna Niguel, California. Thousand okay. dollar prize to anybody who wins the, the Push Hands. I haven't officially announced this yet. So this is kind of like the first announcement <laughs> okay. uh, of, of, of um, Jason Bukic from the uh, World Series of Jiu Jitsu reached out to me and said, hey, okay. like, I, I, I see what you're doing. Um, <clears throat> I want to start a tournament for push hands. Um, and I've trained in Taiwan. And I know you coach the US team and you competed in Taiwan at the Tai Chi World Cup. Let's talk and let's train. So he came out a few times and, uh, you know, we, we hit it off. And, and so we're doing this together. And this is our first event, um, but we're doing a kendo style. So the thing I haven't announced yet, and I'll, I'll put out the promo video this week for actually announcing the, the, uh, competition but we're doing a kendo style meaning that the winner gets to fight the head judge which is me oh, oh so okay that's so, cool like, it's gonna be great so if you want that full thousand bucks you gotta be me and, <laughs> and like it's 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 immaterial uh like like 
it's to me this is all about like standing up and showing that hey we, we have to we have to actually live our principles mm-hmm. you know and it's okay to be beaten like you beat in my class fine and because and, and like the, the what we're really doing here is we're actually spreading the principles mm-hmm. and i think it's really really important to do that um so you know i'm excited for that and, and i'll share the information with you as a, like yeah, i definitely think, you know, wrap up the promo video, but it's, it's going to be, uh, uh, it's going to be some, the beginning of something big that'll tie back into justice for hire in the real world. That, that, um, yeah. That's I'm looking forward. Now, is it going to be streaming? Um, have you guys decided that is it going to like for us, like who won't be able to travel to California, is it going to be streaming or videotape for later, um, you know, pay-per-view or watch, or have you guys decided that yet? I am texting Jason right now. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> well, that'll, that'll, that'll work. But that's, yeah, man, I'm, I'm excited. Um, I'm excited to hear that. That ought to be, that ought to be uh, fun to watch. Uh, even more fun for the people competing, of course, but fun to watch. And um, yeah. the, the intention is to bring the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu community into the Tai Chi push hands community. Okay. That's well, really, that important. would be interesting. <clears throat> That and that's Jason's BJJ teacher, and he's a former MMA fighter. Okay. And so I think that the, the the point we know that the talent pool, like I, I, you know, I can tell you right now, I, I I want all these Tai Chi people to come and train with me. Like if you're a Tai Chi teacher, I, I want to help you. <clears throat> I want to help you elevate your business. If you're a Tai Chi student, I want to help you uh, process what's happening with with your teacher uh, in a way that that uh, allows you to to. To, to have a, essentially a, a new type of sounding board uh, and to practice techniques and, and drill them in a different way and, and become a better learner. Um, but when it comes to the, and I'm hoping that, that this group, teachers and students coming to me for this, like I said, this, this Patreon, I'll, I'll launch in a couple, uh, maybe in a week or so, um, will convert to a new crop of competitors on the US circuit. But we've created, we created, um, rules based on the Taiwanese fixed step push hands, which means we're not doing the moving step yet because mm. we're, we want to take it one step at a time. Um, like there's, there's certain things that people need to understand about moving step push hands. Um, maybe by the end of the year, maybe next year, we'll add like the full grappling moving step because people might think it's bad wrestling. Mm-hmm. And the reason they might think it's bad wrestling is because they don't know what they're looking at. You know, like the second I touch with a, and this might, this is a little bit of a generalization, but in my experience, I'm saying my experience, when I touch with somebody um, that is from a style that's not Tai Chi, Tai Chi is, a, is like Tai Chi push hands is a, uh, can be a scientific pushing system, like an actual, like the science of pushing, pushing, pulling, redirecting, like the, the, the pressure, forget about the throws for a second, like pushing. And, you know, like that's, that's something you don't see much. And uh, when I play with folks who are, I know how to throw, I did judo and, I, you know, I, I, <laughs> I did Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, uh, did some, some very little wrestling, some Swai Zhao, but, mm-hmm. um, you know, going in there and knowing that if somebody is really good at something, I'm really good at something they're not good at. Mm-hmm. And I know how to confuse them, make them frustrated enough that when they try to do those things, I block them. And then uh, the second that they're frustrated, that's when I push them. <laughs> so okay. like, that's my strategy. It's really, it's really super simple. I'm, like, I'm gonna block you in the thing you're good at by doing something that you're not good at. And then when you're frustrated, I'm gonna do it again. And, and so that's, and, and, and more specifically, I do it in a ring. Like, cause that's when you play moving step push hands. Cause put, moving step push hands is essentially similar wrestling. You push somebody out of a ring or throw them on the floor. So, the second you have to think about space control and not stepping out of that ring, that adds another layer for a moving grappler that's very challenging for them to, in my experience, um, to, to counterbalance with their uh, with the skill sets they're already really good at. So you know it, it, it's and, and you know you, you can verify this by looking at my my YouTube channel and just seeing some of the the, the players. I've had some amazing people um, come and do push hands with me. And, uh, you know, they're, they're, it's always a knowledge transfer because they do things that I don't do very well. 
and then I do things that they don't do very well. And so that's that's the, the what we're hoping to do is bring the BJJ community that's really good at at, at playing Tai Chi on the ground essentially, um, and just say, hey, you know, you can do this standing up, and you know that you can essentially prevent yourself from going to the ground by doing this stuff. And and here's the game. Here's how to get better at that. And so it's gonna be great. Oh yeah, so I'm looking forward to it. So we will have information. Um, Sifu Jam is gonna put out the the teaser, the trailer. Or the info, the announcement. I'm there. I'm movie yeah, mode. It'll the be announcement. Like a little 60 seconds out. <laughs> and then uh, any information I will definitely share uh, because uh, it would be nice to watch if if that's possible. Either you know matches that were deemed to be ones that will be uh, recorded and then put up on a YouTube channel, or if you guys have plans for for streaming or the later VOD or something. That would that would be great. And um, you spoke about justice for hire. So what's what's the latest with Justice for Hire? What are we where are we at with Justice for Hire? We are live editing. We have <clears throat> I have hard drives upon hard drives surrounding this computer right now um, that have three and a half years of footage on them. We've been shooting this show for three and a half years and <clears throat> building a community, we're producing it with the community. Uh, if you don't know what Justice for Hire is, it's a show produced with a community. It's a cinematic universe built with a community. We have an app that anybody, anything you post on the app is part of the larger shared story world of characters. You create your own character. The concept is Uber for heroes. You can hire a hero or become one and get paid. That is the story of Justice for Hire. And so we actually have an app, but the app is, is, is really about social filmmaking. It's about making a show together. Uh, we're not a real vigilante app. So um, we are, we've been producing this, like anything you do that as long as you follow the rules is part of the story. And <clears throat> that's fun as a social network and all this other stuff. Uh, but then there's the actual product, the product, the final product that we're making is a show. And so, and it, whether or not your footage makes it into a show is still part of the, the cinematic universe and it might be used later on mm -hmm. in a year or two years because that's how if you if you like marvel if you like really marvel dc is not really <laughs> i mean they're trying to figure it out but you know something might happen in one film and then like 10 years later they're like hey you remember that one guy who walked right. across the street <laughs> oh my god he did that yeah. and so you know like it, it, it could totally be like that and so we're um, we're in a position right now where <clears throat> we're live editing. You can join the cast from justiceforhire.app right now. You can create your own character. You can take on challenges. Challenges are about your story. Missions are about the shared story world. Um, and we've been live for about a year because we went viral on TikTok last year, if you remember. Mm -hmm. But um, what we're doing now, this live editing on Twitch, which I still have to do tonight for a few minutes at least, is... Um, it's a huge deal because no one, and then if you know somebody who has done this, let me know because I want to learn from them. But as far, as far as I know, no one's done live editing of a show ever. Um, you know, obviously a live stream event is live edited. But what I'm saying, like, know, you know, like yeah, well, no. actually producing a show and going beyond spoilers, you know, it's like, hey guys, we're not going to use these shots because these takes suck. Like mm -hmm. for whatever reason, we're going to use this take and we're going to combine it with this other take because look at the look in his eyes in this take and look at the look in the, the motion she does with her hand in this other take and talking about why. And so it becomes, and not only that, then saying to the audience, to the cast members, our global cast, hey, we need a scene like this mm -hmm. to finish this, this, to finish this part of the story. We need a moment like that with the, with the character. Go to justiceforhire.app right now, send in that scene. Mm -hmm. And like you'll see a mission and we'll put we'll put up the little call to action and you take that that call to action on and you you submit your scene and then we we cut it in. So it's it's it is a dream come true for me to be in this position right now doing this and to feel um, like all the challenges that that it took to get this done. You know, like I've been working on JFH for, for since high school, you know, so we've been working on it for over 20 years and so many different renditions. It was in comic book form. I even interviewed my father on our podcast last night. Yeah. And, you know, my dad, you know, I grew up in the, the comic book business. And so 
um, to see, he wrote the first Justice for Hire comic. And to be able to take all of these, these years of energy and, and, and I watched all our old short films that are non-canonical to our current cinematic universe, at least right now, and looking at all the effort put in and you can put in a lot of work and still miss the mark. And I've watched creators miss the mark all like as a publisher, a comic book publisher, creators would come to me and they'd want us to publish their books. And I'd say, huh, we're gonna have to pass on this. And it's tough to pass on somebody's passion but there's something missing. And what happens when you look in the mirror and you see that thing missing in you? Mm. What, what steps do you take? Do you take any steps? Do you give up? And so Justice for Hire for me is a, it is, it is, I am hoping that it is remembered by me or by somebody, uh, <laughs> anybody, uh, as what happens when you surrender yourself to higher power to greater good. And you have passion, you have all this stuff, you have great ideas, and then you say, you know what, but does it serve? And I realized that I couldn't, the way we're doing it right now is a, is a result of, of recognizing that all my hard work and all this hard work of all these other people um, still wasn't serving a higher purpose. And it doesn't matter if you work hard. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're right. If, you're, if your rightness doesn't serve other people, it doesn't, doesn't matter. Um, so, you know, I, it took me a long time to, to get out of my own way and to surrender and to say, you know what, like, I actually, this story can't be about characters that I care about. It's got to be ca about characters that we care about because mm -hmm. you care about because you're in it. Mm -hmm. And so if you're in the cinematic universe and it's your story, and then we can have some sort of structure where, you know, I could be helpful in that area. And, and help to provide a structure for you to tell your story, that's, that's real value. And then in the same way, I can do the same thing for me and I can, I can help mold by actually practicing what I preach. So, wow, okay, hold on. I need to fix this about myself. So maybe someone else may have the same challenge and they may they need to make some adjustments in their internal character and their narrative and all this other stuff. So um, it's, it's a really interesting experience and like i said the, our big phase right now is just is live editing so it's gonna be for months we're gonna be doing this for months wow. and um and and you know one of our cast members reached out two days ago on our private chat and was like hey i saw i'm in that scene can you can you send it to me i want to repost it and i'm like hey i that was an assembly cut like an assembly cut means that now there's a rough cut and then now then after that it's gonna be a fine cut and then once that fine cut is done it's gonna be colored and then it's gonna be sent to sound design that's gonna be sent to scoring so all this stuff is gonna happen because we're actually packaging a real show mm. and you know and we have real professionals that have partnered with us to make this show a reality which is how we've gotten it done on no budget and have top tier people associated with it you know so <laughs> yeah that's that's wonderful and um if anyone has been paying attention and i know that they have if they watch this channel uh, you've you've done several things with the Urban Action Showcase to elevate the creators of some content, too, particularly the um, the the fight scene uh, contests that were they were in two iter two uh, iterations. One was back in the summer, and then one was um, when the normal Urban Action Showcase happens in November. And it was a panel. I remember Rick Rick Myers, uh, the Fat Samurai guy, uh, Vincent Lynn. And I believe I'm leaving out two other gentlemen. And excuse me if I am. Uh, were were judging the scenes. It was I think it was like five five gentlemen from the uh, Justice for Hire who had their scenes um, judged, and we came up with a winner in both times. It ended up being five. It wasn't the same five, but it ended up being five <laughs> in November too. And that was that, that was great because you were helping them to um, perfect and go into that mode of constantly improving their fight scene. So by, by the critique of Mr. Myers and Fat Samurai Guy and Vincent Lynn, it was very good. So you are doing what you're speaking about in, in, in that aspect and in others, but I'm just picking out that act, aspect because we're the fight scene people, we love fight scenes. And so, you know, they were very, 
um, I, one guy had his notepad out. I remember he was like scribbling notes, like when they were talking. So it was very good. So I'm sure that his fight scene now has improved because he was really, I mean, I could see him looking down and like, you could see his hand like shaking, but it was, I'm like, he's taking notes. And so that's, that was wonderful. It's, you know, Demetrius Angelo at, at, at Urban Action Showcase has been a real champion for us. Um, <clears throat> like our, when, when we, it was Demetrius who, and he was, he, he was reaching out to me like in 2014 when they first started um, and uh, like saying, hey, you know, I, I came across just for the comic book series and it had this live action DVD stuff. Would you like to submit? And, <clears throat> you know, he's, he's been so supportive from, from the second he had that platform and, um, uh, you know, recently called what we're doing with Real World, which is the production company uh, that's producing Justice for Hire that, that's focused on making movies and shows with the world. You know, he called us the, the, new, the, the new gold standard in audience engagement. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> it's a huge deal, you know, Warner Media executive <laughs> saying right. that. And, um, and so you'll see that post coming out where I asked him, I'm like, hey man, can I quote you on that? He's like, sure. So I'm like, <laughs> okay, cool. I'll make a nice little graphic and we're going to put that out there since we're raising money on WeFunder right now. <laughs> WeFunder.com yeah. slash real world. Uh, but so I, you know, I, I, uh, uh, we, we did, you know, we won that first, our, our, our trailer in 2018, our very first trailer. We shot something in our first shoot, got us uh, best trailer of the year. Um, and at the Urban Action Showcase in 2018. Total surprise. And um, like that was just in the beginning uh, like of this wonderful snowballing effect of, huh, like, well, we're doing this on no budget. So I'm calling in favors. Okay, well, let's, mm -hmm. let's pay, pay a $10 entry fee and see what happens. Oh my God, we won. Oh, wow, hold on. People are showing up to our meetups and we're spending a dollar a day on Instagram. Uh, to like promote this and people actually show up or they actually want to be a part of this and they actually want to train and they want to learn all these things. And um, it was, you know, slowly but surely we just kept on building community and kept on. And I, I'd say, I'm like, I'm like, Hey God, you know, like I'm exhausted. I'm tired. I'm like, my nerves are shot. Um, I haven't promoted this thing. It's to, like, we're supposed to do a meetup tomorrow. We're supposed to do something with the community tomorrow. Um, I'm just going to put it out there. And if anyone shows up, I know it's the right thing. If no one shows up, I know I'm wasting my time. And then tons of people would show up and I'm just like, okay, there's something here. And, um, <clears throat> you know, fast forward to, to last summer, uh, Demetrius is the one who suggested that we do an event with the two Rick Myers. We were all on a call with Rick because Comic-Con was having their San Diego Comic-Con was mm -hmm. having challenges with, with, with COVID and supporting all the events that they used to support. And Rick's like, okay, I'm going to do it on my own this year. And, and Demetrius is like, well, you know, if you're going to do it on your own, then you should be activating the justice for hire community because there's, there's something happening there. And that's where the youth is going to come from making, making action scenes. And, you know, I, I was really proud of our community showing up with original action scenes with heart. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, I think the real power in the position that we're in right now is that we are surrounded by wisdom. We're like surrounded, yourself included. We are surrounded by caretakers of the martial principles who want nothing more than to pass the on through story and the stories of training the stories of, of victory of the heart and good over evil and all these things. And so when you have, when you have a bunch of kids, and when I say kids, I, I mean adults too, because there are some grown up kids and, and I, you know, I fall into that category, but like, you know, like, <laughs> you know, when you have, when you have a platform where everyone's like, Hey, let's play together and let's actually make things that make us feel good. Because it's hard for me to find stuff on Netflix that makes me feel good. It's really hard. And, and so I'm like, okay, well, well, let's make that platform. And then when you have folks like Rick and, and Vincent Lynn and, and, and fat, that fat samurai guy supporting, uh, you know, motivated by Demetrius's words, it's a big deal. And so it was actually a huge success for us in, in July. Um, 
And then we came back in November for Urban Action Showcase. And we did another event where uh, I think Rick's event was just make your own action scene. Mm -hmm. And then we took it to another level, which is like remake one of your favorite That's movies right. yes. that yeah. is like being featured at the Urban Action Showcase. And, um, and people did that. And it was super dope to see that. And then we had, you know, more folks come out from our side um, to, to, to be judges on a panel. You know, well, we had uh, Rick Myers came out, um, uh, Mike Sandoval, who was a former chairman of the New York Film Academy, uh, Donnie Jeffcoat, who, Sensei Donnie Jeffcoat, who, uh, who runs the Shaolin American Self-Defense Academy here in North Hollywood, like top school in, in LA. And, um, and uh, you know, former child actor himself, and, and and Wonder Years and all that stuff, sliders, <laughs> and so really, really amazing guy. Who um, uh, you know, I'm I'm doing a lot of work with Donnie now, and um, you know, just just great people who who know the industry and know martial arts, and to be able to create a, a bridge uh, for folks who, you know, this is we're in a unique position because it's it's still kind of it's still social media. What mm -hmm. we're doing is still social. So it's not unionized. It's not all this other, there's not a lot of red tape to cut through. The red tape is released. And the fact that we can, I, I can get on a phone call. I can text somebody like, hey, this is what we're doing. No one else is doing this. Will you show up and make yourself accessible to, to this community? And the answer is always yes. And so I, I'm, I'm very excited about um, providing more value this year for the Justice for Hire community. And you know, part of that is is you know what we're doing with real world and and just allowing the community to anybody who wants to to actually own a part of the 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 company that that we're we're building, so that as we grow, you know, our new mission statement for real world is to help a billion people become superheroes in movies and shows. It's very attainable. It's a very attainable goal because there's a billion people on TikTok right now, and yeah. no one. No one is organizing those stories into uh, no, those videos into shared stories, and no studio, not one of them, not one network, those people enough to make real film and television with them. None of them. None of them have a person inside, not one person, who can sit in the position to look those people in the eye and say, "Let's collaborate. Let's make a story together." And here are. I'm going to be very cautious with my words because everything I say could be a liability <laughs> and understand without having to go and check in with a boss, because the reason that this hasn't happened in, in the studio system for the last 20 years has been because of the legal issues, because of the challenges. This is not a new information that we're doing. This is not a new idea. Jeff Gomez, our, our, our uh, advisor, uh, for real world advisor to Marvel and to uh, to Star Wars franchises for Disney has been pitching this since 1999. So the challenge has been that the technology is, hasn't been available and that there hasn't been somebody who sits in a position that understands how all these systems work together to circumvent um, the, the essentially the inefficiencies that block the the fan, the audience member from actually becoming part of the story. And so we figured out a way around that. And, you know, now we're just all in it. And that's what, that's why we're saying, Hey guys, justice for hire is our first show. And we're proving this model. It's working and we're building the studio out. We have the technology, we have the production capability and we have the relationships. And so like, if you want to build with us, come invest in the company and be a part of, you know, essentially the, the true future of film and television and, and storytelling, uh, which is community based. So it's a big deal. Oh yeah. And then you you mentioned uh, wefunder.com. Can we talk about that? Because I, I don't know if a lot of people are familiar with uh, what you're doing with that. I'm going to share the screen so as you talk, we can see what you're talking about. Oh, sure. Well, so WeFunder, so this is equity crowdfunding. It's different than Kickstarter. It's not Indiegogo. It's not Kickstarter. You're not donating money um, to, to help a cause. Like <laughs> We're not asking for money. And we're not, you know, like for you to donate, like you're actually investing in a company and you're owning a piece of that company. And, uh, you know, for, for the first, the, like, there's like, there's like a discount for the first like 150 K we raised, we're at 58,125 right now. Uh, but the first 150 K we raised, there's like a 30% discount on, on, uh, it's a dollar a share. So essentially you get like, 
you know, for for a dollar, you get a you know dollar thirty or seventy cents per per share. Um, but essentially, you own part of the company, and that is a, it's a major game changer for um, for entrepreneurs and for companies that uh, are really about community because this is this is about activating your community. It's about saying, hey, you know what? We're um, you know, I used to tell venture capitalists in New York, I'm like, I don't care if you guys put in ten million dollars tomorrow we're still doing equity crowdfunding because it's spiritually part of where we're going. If we're saying that people can come and make stories with us, but they don't own the stories, that's problematic. Most studios that, even ones that we're, we're talking to collaborating, talking about collaborating with, with right now, um, they wanna own the submissions. They wanna own the characters you create, that you create. And if you submit right now, Guarantee you, you submit to, um, uh, for, for any film contest, um, more specifically, uh, let's say Ridley Scott. Ridley Scott did a documentary two years ago uh, and it was a sequel documentary, but it was essentially, I forgot the name of it, um, but essentially like it was a day in the life or something like that. And um, anybody who sent in footage, they own that footage, whether they used it or not. Um, okay. And and there's several companies that do this. They're like when you submit something, they own what you submit. For justice for hire, for what we're doing with real world, you own everything you're doing. Like you you are essentially getting access to a community and to tools that are going to help you build out your own franchise, to treat your story with the same reverence that Star Wars and and Marvel uh, properties are treated with. Like we should treat our stories like that. Like that's a big deal. Like, and there's no reason that you shouldn't have access to that information because it's all information. It's all just how you think about it, how you treat yourself, how you treat your story, how you treat your characters, how you position your branding and uh, how you interconnect your branding with other brands. And, and so, you know, how you connect characters across shared stories. <laughs> so, you know, this is a, a big part of, of uh, our vision is for people to own their own stories. What we get out of it is we have a, a non-exclusive license to any content uh, placed in our story world. So in other words, you still own it, but we are, if, if you put it into the Justice for Higher story world, um, you know, th this is where it's similar to a submission. You can't delete a submission. So you can make it private, but we know you sent it in because you submitted it to us. And mm -hmm. if we think it works for the show, we will not only include it in the show, but you're gonna get paid if that show is profitable. So like when there's, when there's cash coming in that, that's significant, like, you know, we want to make sure that every participant gets paid because they own their IP. They're sharing that with the community and the community is monetizing it through these community projects, essentially the series and others. And our series, Premium Justice for Hire series, is that that's the, the big tree trunk, but there's a lot of people that already mini justice for hire series they have their own characters and they're just doing regular content every week in character and it's 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 real you know and, and i couldn't be more ecstatic about this because you know social networks are cinematic universes they're just not thought about that way so if you have a social network where everything you post is part of the story it's it's a really big deal and that's that's what we built that's, and that's, that's what the WeFunder is. You can invest in that right now. <laughs> Let's go here. So we will uh, link to it, but it's wefunder.com slash real world, world with a U. R-E-E-L-W-U-R-L-D. Yeah, and that's, I mean, that's that's wonderful for a lot of people who dreamed of doing this. So you're providing that too, and me included. I just got to get the 12 Venom mask. I got I got to get the 12 Venom mask. Well, you're already a character. Yeah. I've seen that you have the, the profile up there, right? Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah the profile. Go. I see the 12 this, Venom profile. This, I'm, 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 I'm stealing the scorpion from Five Deadly Venom's mask for the 12 As Venom. you should. Yeah, he's... Uh, so I got some I got some ideas. We'll have to talk about them, but uh, yeah, it's, this is this is I think this is um, what many of us as fans over the years have wanted, and Real World and Justice for Hire are providing that. There we go. I'm, on the, I'm, I'm actually searching Twelve Venom right now because I want to make sure that I uh, allied you. You can ally a rival any character on the app. Okay. 
And so I, I'm, I'm making sure that I've uh, 12th Venom. Here we go. I'm not sure if I allied you. I did not ally you. Now I've allied you. Uh -oh. I allied 12th Venom. Uh -oh. Hey, man, you got to put a profile video up there. Okay. Man. So that's that's the next thing. Profile, profile video. video. <laughs> okay. I got to get some. Okay. We'll talk about that. <laughs> yeah. That's, I mean, you know, it's, it's for, for us. I'm texting think... you right now in chat, in oh, character. Goodness. You can also <laughs> chat in character and out of character. Oh, wow. Toggle that. I got to get out my phone. Where did that... <laughs> I think I dropped it. Like, wow, where is my phone? But anyway, um, oh, it's right here. <laughs> there we see. go. 12 Venom on the team. That's like all right. So we, I mean, I think this is wonderful. And it's why I want to have you back on. One of the many reasons. One, you're a great guy. That's number one. We have to say that. And then two, I, I want people, I want more people to know about this because I know I have friends uh who I've told about it. I don't know if they've went done anything, but I've told them and they've been interested. And you know, life life happens and gets in the way or things happen. So, but I think this is a potential to, as you said, literally have billions of of superheroes, you know, in the app and in other endeavors that will happen through this. And uh, you know, we we need to do that. And and I want to thank you for for continuing with this vision that we have or that we have that you have for we the we's the right we use the, we okay we use the right word okay we use the right word, right okay. right word. <laughs> and uh yeah thank you so anyone who, who's going to watch this we're going to link to everything in the description so don't just flash past this video click the description i'm gonna have all the links that'll take you to see fujan's um tai chi channel real world justice for hire and anything else, if the if the information is given for the Tai Chi um, competition, that will be there too. So we can all just we want to support whatever you're doing because it's, it's not only supporting you, it's supporting the vision of the community. So we want to definitely Thank support you. that. And I want to please, shift please, things. Everybody, share, 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 share. Really, yes, and, that and, button. And you know, we we are in a position where we're, um, you know. Like, it's not like we have a marketing engine behind us. It's actually like the word of mouth. You know, when we went viral on TikTok, that was huge for us. So, you know, it's it really is people telling people about it. And whether you whether you can invest in the in the regularly crowdfunding campaign or not, it does it, it's it's really more so about being part of the community. If you can invest, awesome. If you can't invest, join Justice for Hire or do both and and really start like sharing this idea. Of, of treating our creativity with the same level of rever reverence as, as the studios, as the networks. Because when we start banding together in this way, it's, it's going to be unstoppable. This is an inevitable future of film and television. And it, it is all going to be made with community participation. So it's just, you know, like we're, we're fortunate to be first movers and we're fortunate to actually have an authentic um, heart space connection with the crowd. Um, and and it's and it's a that in and of itself is 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 a testament to to how we're doing things. Like we're actually talking to real people. We're actually doing development calls, uh, and we do it every week. <laughs> you know, you can schedule your own development call right from the app. And these are Hollywood style calls, and we're working on stories, and we're and people are shooting every day, every week, and and building out stuff. So, you know, justice yeah, for her. That's, that. that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna link that and definitely go create you a character and let's let's join the universe um i want to shift gears a little because i you mentioned the matrix earlier I, and there's a I, fun real world promo video of me trying to get into the matrix <laughs> <Check it out. laughs> i want to get your thoughts on the latest our our uh segue back into the desert of the real with the matrix <laughs> What what did you think of the latest? I can't even remember the name of it. Is it Revol Resurrections? Resurrections. Okay. What what were you, what are your thoughts on the Matrix Resurrections? Uh, you know, I, I have to preface this with the first Matrix film to me is one of the most important, um, you know, films made in in the twentieth century, and uh, I, I I really love it, and I was highly disappointed by the set of the sequels. So uh, when it came to a reboot or uh, this revisiting it to the world, 
Um, there's things that I loved about it, specifically the third act and, and the, like the final action scene I thought was, was uh, one of the best action scenes I've seen in anything in a long time. And I was like, this is dope. I'm like, really, this is, I'm like really, you know, paying attention. They're doing new things. This is great. Um, but for the most part, you know, it was tough for me to swallow uh, and care about. And, you know, I, I have so much respect for everybody associated with that film. And so I think the challenge is that it's just that, um, that story means so much to me now. And it means so much to me in the sense that um, I see it as a tool the way I've never seen it before. It has changed for me. Like I'm not watching entertainment to be entertained anymore. <clears throat> um, you know, if I want entertainment, I'll just turn everything off and I'm having a joyous time by myself. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, like, you know, so, um, you know, I, I stay surrounded by, you know, like, this is the sci-fi fantasy special street fighter but um you know i stay surrounded by these uh, by iconography of the things that i care about because these stories and characters remind me of the things that i want to be mm -hmm. as a person so um in that sense there's not a lot that i i i felt uh in the matrix reminded me of, of stuff that i want to touch mm -hmm. in life I, I just kind of felt like, I'm like, huh, like it, it, you really, it's kind of like you're fishing for a story here. And, you know, it, it's, uh, I'm, I'm happy they made it. I'm happy that, uh, you know, that, that, that something happened with it, but uh, I, I expect a lot more of the franchise. And also was, I, I thought that Michael B. Jordan was going to be in the new matrix movie. Like that yeah. got announced. Like that, that did. Was yeah. At so, first it did. Yeah. I do remember that. They so were, I, I remember reading the article. It was attached like, oh, to it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was going to be great. And then, you know, it didn't happen. <laughs> yeah, right. So I was like looking for him in the trailers. I was like, where is he? Right. Like surprise character, maybe. I'm like, man, know. this is going to be great. Just like <laughs> when um, Batman Returns came out and I was looking for Robin. If you remember, mm -hmm. um, I mean, now, now it's more public again that uh, Marlon Wayans was supposed to be Robin. Yeah, I in, remember that. Dark Knight yeah. Returns. I remember when I was a kid, I was like, nah, it was like nine or 10 or, or something like that or 11. And, um, and I heard about it and it like, I remember getting so excited because there weren't a lot of people, superheroes, especially that at all resembled me. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so when I heard about that, I was like, what? And I flipped out and I was like, look in the trailers. I'm like, <laughs> where is I'm he? like man, I think I saw his, his, his flat top. <laughs> his flat top is right in the Batmobile. This is going to be great. My dad's going to be great. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and it, and he wasn't there. <laughs> yeah, he was not there. Yeah, so I, yeah, I mean, it was, yeah, I, I think I'm, I don't need to see another Matrix movie. I'll, I'll leave it at that. Wow. I'm, I'm, yeah, I didn't, like it was, it like you said, the third act, the, the, the last action scene was great. To get me to that point, though. Yes. It was, it was almost pain painful to watch like i'm like what are they doing what are you talking I was sitting about they're catching covid while i was, right. while I was watching. <laughs> what are they I'm like what are they talking about like what are they doing and you know i don't know man. if the audience knows that i got covid on christmas and that's when i saw the matrix so <laughs> let everybody know i wasn't sure if we were recording during that time or not. no we weren't <laughs> recording <laughs> so i mean yeah we <laughs> Well, uh, it uh, the first Matrix was excellent, and I think that's my memory of the Matrix. Yeah, like the first one and the rest were kind of, yeah, well, you know. <laughs> well, I think that that's uh, I, you know just to kind of connect this back to real world and justice for hiring and kind of everything we're doing here is that uh, one of the things we say in that vision video at the top of that real world um, WeFunder page is that when you see a movie and you're inspired, there's no system for you to actually do something with that inspiration. Mm -hmm. There's no clear defined system. Um, essentially you walk out of a movie and then you're, you're, you're hit with chatter. You're hit with people that you're talking to about the movie. You're, you're um, distracted from the, from the feelings. You might be talking about some of them. You might be going to get some food or, you know, and one of the big things about meditation um, and, 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 and like having a vision of some sort 
you know, having a holy experience is silence and contemplation afterward to process fully what that, what that moment was that should inspire you to bring the light out of you. And so when I think about the first Matrix film, and I remember coming out of that first film ready, I was ready to meet the world in a different way. And lots of people were, lots of people. Yeah. But there was no infrastructure to take advantage of that energy. So it gets degraded into what we call fandom. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to do better with stories. If you tell a story like The Matrix that makes people want to get up and change the world, you better have a system that is going to take those people and put them in, put them to work. And that is part of the vision for Justice for Hire. It's like, hey, we're gonna, we, if, if you're, if you're a day one, if you're in the day one Justice for Hire family, you know, meaning that you're, you're with us now and you're, you're, you're looking at what we're doing, what we're really about. And we're producing this first season of the show. We already have season zero out. We have four episodes out you can watch right now, but um, we call that a starter pack. But if you're really day one, um, like what we're building is a way for uh, for us as people to to enjoy a story, to like be inspired, to change the world, then actually go like take action. You know, like there's a reason we have the advisors we have. Like if you look at our advisory board on, on, on WeFunder or on our website, like there's a reason. All those people are there for a reason, because like we're we're building a real system for for to take entertainment to a new level. Because entertainment is really about what we do when we when we open ourselves up to to story. It's it's opening ourselves up to to uh, be changed inside, and we do it every day, every time we pick up a screen. So you know it's it's very important. Um, you know what we're doing is important. And that first Matrix movie, like I, I just I'll never forget that that feeling. You know, and um, and not yeah. knowing where to go with it. So now you have a place to go. It's called real world. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's do it, man. We, we, we got to do it. Um, any other, any other, I mean, you're so busy. Uh, I did want to ask you though, have you got this yet? Uh, can you see it? Oh my God. What is that? It's the Shaw brothers, Shaw scope volume one set from arrow films. And it's oh, okay. the yeah. 4k remastered of, can't remember the films in here. Five Deadly Venoms, Boxer from oh. Shandong, King Boxer. Um, what am I forgetting? Heroes of the East, Challenge of the Masters, wow. Crippled Avengers. Oh, I'm missing something. Executioners from Shaolin. All the classics. And this is volume one. So they're coming out with a volume two this, this year or next year. No, how many how many films in one one box? It's, it is. Let me open it and see. This will be my halfway unboxing video here. It is. Wow. It is. Oh. It is eight. Wait. It is eight discs, but two. It's um most have two on one disc. Wow. So King Boxers by itself. Box from Shandong's by itself. Well, we got five Shaolin Master, Shaolin Temple, Mighty Peking Man. Challenge of the Masters and Executioners from Shaolin, Chinatown Kid, which has some, I remember seeing the World North cut on the martial arts theater here in Detroit. And this one has some deleted scenes that make the story flow better. It like wow. makes more sense about certain things that happen in the end. Wow. Uh, Five Venoms and Crippled Avengers, Heroes of the East and Dirty Ho. And we have a uh, music from Shaolin Temple, Mighty Peking Man, Chinatown Kid, and another disc with music from Five Venoms, Crippled Avengers, and Dirty Ho. Plus okay, so nice, I, need to, uh, I need to order that for my dad. Plus it's not, well, can you see that this nice- I didn't even know uh, that it existed. Yeah, it's, it came out, uh, ooh, when did I get this? It was around December 8th or 18th. I can't remember, but I pre-ordered it last year. Uh, when I heard the pre-order, you can get it on. You can get it through Amazon, like oh, Amazon.com. I, I, I got the website. Oh, you got it right. <laughs> this is like, oh man, these films look so, so beautiful. Wow. In these, in this version, this is volume one. They've also, they've already 
Arrow films is al already confirmed volume two. And I believe Invincible Shaolin, 10 Tigers of Guangdong, wow. Kid with Golden Arm. Oh, it's my dad's one favorite. One more. Wow. And then it's still going to be the same amount, but those are the first four titles they announced. That's amazing. So, yeah, I had to get that one. I'm like, oh, my goodness, I'm going to get in trouble, but uh, I'm going to get that one. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Oh, so, yeah. I mean, yeah, that, that, uh, I'm, 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 I love DVDs and, 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 and uh, uh, Blu-rays because of, <clears throat> because the streaming, the, the streaming ecosystem has not yet replicated the, the, the dynamic um, singular narrative experience of being in the full, like surrounded by the making of and, mm -hmm. uh, and the film itself. Yeah. Like, like the streaming never captured that. And I think that it can, I think that it will um, as, as the streamers, as each streaming platform starts to, or the, the studio start to understand like what, what certain desires might be on there. But I think that, that, um, you know, it, it, it's, I, I'm looking forward to adapting that model to uh, what we're doing on, on yeah. JFH and real world, for example, you know, but soon enough, we're going to be able to have your own uh, action figure. And like things like that. So oh, like action figure of that. you, custom don't action. Don't tell me. Figure. Don't tell me that. Well, hey, we already we already have the, the, the we've already talked to the company about it. So like <laughs> I, I have to email in a couple of days. Don't so, tell me that. I'm gonna oh, have man. like <laughs> oh that's oh boy. We're gonna be in trouble around this household when that happens. <laughs> trouble. That's but see that's that's and you've you've spelled out the vision, I think so perfectly. That is what fandom that will transform or have transformed community. That is what we have wanted for a long time. Long time. So this is this is some exciting news. You guys heard it here. That's why this exclusive is in the background behind my head. You've heard it here. We've got several different things coming from real world from, from Sifu Jan. We have the, what is the name of the push hands competition? Oh, World Series of Push Hands. World Series of Push Hands coming, and that's in March, correct? March 26. March 26, hopefully streaming or VOD. Uh, we've got the expansion of Justice for Hire. We've got live editing happening on Twitch. We have um, the eventual production of, of JFH action figures. We've got the cinematic universe of JFH. We got a lot going. This is why this is why Sifu Jan gets gets very little rest. He's working all the time. But we do appreciate your vision. We appreciate the work that you do. And we I, I'm so excited now. I'm like, okay, I gotta get my outfit together for his action figure. I gotta have it all. Anyway, <laughs> it's so great. So Sifu Jan, any, any, I mean, any last words you want to leave with um, our community? Um, you know, please tell us where we can find you, um, where we can find about WeFunder, everything that you want us to know so we can be locked into this community and we can help with this growth and expansion to the dimensions that it is going to uh expand to uh, I, I, you know first is, is the gratitude for you and for for all the listeners um and what and, and viewers <laughs> um so you know i I'm, I'm super accessible you can find me at jam mechanist anywhere instagram twitter tiktok facebook linkedin um <clears throat> you know if you want to to join justice for hire i mean at justice for hire everywhere same but uh justiceforhire.app is where it's happening. Uh, you can go to justiceforhire.com to learn about like all the things we're doing and you can access the app from there, but it's justiceforhire.app if you want to dive right in <clears throat> and uh, create a character and become a part of the cinematic universe. Uh, Realworld.com is real world. That's the, our, the world's first social film studio to make movies and shows of the world. And we're raising on WeFunder right now. So you can go to wefunder.com slash real world, R-E-E-L-W-U-R-L-D, because you're in it. And it's, uh, yeah, yeah, help us build that studio because it's, 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 like I said, that we're, we're uh, uh, it is inevitable 
<laughs> we are inevitable. But I mean, that, this is just where, you know, just look at where, 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 where social media has brought us over the years and, and each step and each evolution. Uh, and, and, you know, what we're at, we're, what, what's happening now is that people are creating entertainment for each other. And so what happens when we just tie those stories together? And that's what Justice for Hire is. And we're just going to keep on making shows and, and movies with the world. And it's going to be great. And uh, people are going to have their own action figures and they're going to have more <laughs> box sets. <laughs> so um, that would be so that's going to be so beautiful. You know, it's 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 uh, it's a, it's a the daily dream uh, manifesting in reality. So i um, very, very grateful to do it and to have this, your support. And and, uh, and, and and thank you for for giving the time and space on here for this. Oh, thank you for joining us. Uh, I know you got some live editing to do on Twitch, so yeah, I call uh, my son first. <laughs> call, I'll call your son for priorities. Yeah, call your son first, and then I know you got some live editing to do on Twitter. So I appreciate your time. Twitch dot Twitch dot TV slash Justice for Hire. All right, That's we're gonna put that editing. in. Uh, we're gonna put that in the link. Um, on my mind, the description, and so Twitch TV slash Justice for Hire. Yeah. We're going to put that in, in the um, description along with all the other social media links. So there'll be one click away and we can all go expand the community and make a difference and have fun and creativity and spirituality while doing it. So thank you, Sifu Jan. Thank you. This. And uh, we will talk later. Thanks. Thank you. Love you. Bye-bye.